What is that? He has been good for two. Something's got the cross. Oh, oh no! Turn away! Ilya! Back to business! Oh, gets him. So how does he get out? So or do they just not get He just fights through it. He peeks okay. again. Oh, oh he got it in! He's get all things. Blast him! He's got him! Blast him! Blast him! Blast him! You took him! I mean, there's no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so today, we're gonna be quiet again because I'm surrounded by PUBG players and they're German and they play for Ascend. Oh, if you hear any German in the background, that's probably what it is. But anyway, let's take a look at Paper X versus Kami Corp. And let's start off here with round number 15, where Paper X are actually down 9 5 at this point. It's the bonus round for Kami Corp. And they're just going to start off with a quick A split, and we're going to go one for one. Look to explore outside B main. I mean, with the Odin, you'd imagine not in the hands of Forsaken. A three man stack towards A site behind this Viper wall. But the Mind Freak suppressed actually. I'm seeing looking to close the gap as well. Oh, that's still uncomfortable there. Yeah, just about kind of evading detection on the other side of it. But Monier going to be feeling that scrutiny on the side. It's at this point that I want to pause the round and just show you what happens because this is really, really good by Paper X, what you're about to see here. So we've got Monier, as you can see, he's kind of isolated somewhat right now on his own. He does have this Viper Wall to help uh, help him on the site. But what they're going to do, Paper X, is really, really good because Kami Core actually going to explore very, very deep here and, you know, try and maybe find a kill back here and, you know, pick up a gun and be in a be in a good spot. But take a look at what happens because as we run it forward, Paper X get into some really good positions. Monier is able to live with the uh, help of his Viper Wall just here. So he's able to cross back across the gen just there. But now what Paper X do is really, really good. We're going to get my Freak here. He's going to come out into Heaven. His job now is to guard main. These two here, we're going to get a Prowler out here. Forsaken's going to see these guys, okay? And something's going to come up here. But what ends up happening, and this is a really good decision by Monier as well, is he's then going to realize that Kami Gora are trying to push deep. And he's going to come and kind of reflank this back through tree just here. And so we end up with kind of a big pinch going on from Paper X on this area, on these guys, whilst my freak is holding this with his Viper Wall. Really, really good stuff to do this kind of in the moment, on the fly, you know, set up all those things. We're also gonna get the Gecko Flash out here from something which is gonna blind, blind both of these players as well. So just in the moment, very quick reactions. This is kind of peak prime Paper X. Jen, but Look at this though. Okay, so you're getting very aggressive towards short here. On the other side, though, that flash looking very good there. There's the retake towards short. Monier turns attention and keeps his life. Mind Freak keeping him safe. Okay, now moving on to round number 17. And in this one, Kami Core are just going to go for a straight B exec. And this is something that they did a little too much for my liking. We saw it in the previous round as well, of course, that they went for a pretty fast hit. I think that they could have gone for more kind of, you know, late lurk plays, uh, deep in mid, you know, try and catch off rotations against a no sentinel comp. They are playing triple initiator duelist, so it does make sense that they do want to go for these big execs because they have a lot of util to pour into it. But I do think there was options there for them to maybe find more success with the look. But this one's going to start off in quite an interesting way. And I think in general, one thing that really helped Paper X was Forsaken here on the B side did an excellent job. And this time, obviously, we see the Mosh with the with the Cs as well, which isn't perfectly placed necessarily from Paper X. You know, maybe if it was, maybe they do actually get a kill uh, from it. But either way, it gives them enough stall, right? With the Fade Horn as well that reveals, as you can see, three people there. Because actually, Paper X's defensive setup was three people towards A. So you would think they might actually be in some trouble this time. But between something and Forsaken, you're going to see that the delay that these two are able to cause with the Cs uh, and, and the Mosh Pit just there and with this Fade Horn and the spamming of the Odin actually gives these time uh, gives these guys time to actually get across. And you're gonna see Monier actually 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 ends up getting a double kill here because they are able to delay for so long. They're also helped out by this Viper Orb that they're doing uh, kind of on top here, you know, down lane, uh, creating a bit of a one way, which also uh, helps them kind of stall this out. That's a lot of information, and that's again no damage. Ooh, what? He just slingshot over it. This is ridiculous. Something's still alive, but he's nervous, and you know why? He's just seen a whole lot of players. Coming towards his site, has his ult, has Monier, and he just popped his ult as well. Spikes down on lane. Oh god, that's a problem. Devi's gonna at least isolate that final man from Massey. They have no idea where he is. Hello? Hello? Turn around! Tomasi doesn't need to overcook this. He gets out of the way of the pain shell. 
An Alphair 1v1. He's got his reveal back as well. This is everything. You can see Monier tries to evade it, tries to keep undetected. Damasi so close to the corner. Oh. Monier's got him. Paper X. Take another step closer. Okay, now on to the business end of the game. Round number 22. It's 11-10 to Kami Core. And this one's going to start off again with Kami Core looking to what seems to be going for a fast AXX. But we get the Viper Spit out from Mind Freak. So Kami Core don't like it. Right, you get the Viper Spit out here. They don't like it. They do have uh, Thomas E on the other side of the map with the Fade creating some pressure over towards B. But now Paper X is going to go for a bit of an interesting call in general, right? One that I was a bit surprised by and I'm not sure if it was really the right call. The first thing is, I think they're a little late to it. Forsaken is a little late to this call because as you can see, we're kind of grouping up mid and we're going to get ready to push Monyet down mid, right? But Forsaken is a little late here to get across potentially for what I would prefer he does next. And I'll tell you what I mean, because we get to this position here, right? The KO knife uh, is going to come in and suppress uh, Monyet just there. But in a second, we're going to get a Fade Horn up here. We're going to get a Dizzy Flash coming out here as well. Now, one reason that I don't particularly maybe like this at the moment is because we're actually in a pretty good spot, right? We've got a Viper's Pit on A that we're pretty sure maybe at this point that they aren't actually going to challenge and then they've run away from it, right? So we're in a good spot on A because if they want to force, you know, coming through here this tiny choke point good luck to them right good luck doing that right getting all five people through this it's four or four people through that right it's, it's probably not going to go great for them if they do that right so then you could have three people over here on towards b and mid and then you're feeling like you're in a pretty good situation but they go for an aggressive reclear i don't i don't necessarily hate that in and of itself but just the way that they do it i'm not sure is the best right because you see the fade haunt is going to land up here we're also going to get the dizzy coming across just like this Obviously, if Kami Core were a bit deeper into mid here, you know, probably the Dizzy Lands, maybe the Fade Haunt gets something as well. But I think Paper X could do this a bit better, right? As I said, if this was our call, I think Forsaken, you know, I would prefer if he was down here throwing this, right? So, you know, so that he can be close to Monyet and, and actually swing with him potentially as well. Like he throws it and then he runs into the smoke himself and then goes for it essentially, right? And also something has an op. So it's a bit weird because he's throwing the Dizzy Flash as well. But maybe one thing they could do if they do want to do this is, you know, maybe Devi, you give Devi the op instead. He just holds this. Something throws the Flash and actually swings himself, right? Or Devi swings if you want something to keep the op and he's just holding this. Right? Either way, but just watch the way that this plays out because essentially it's just Monyet runs out of smoke. Um, you know, as the Dizzy Flash, you know, I think does catch on to one player, but obviously there's a lot of Kami Core here. But Monyet just walked middle. What? That was a really bold play to bring out there. But now we're going to see Paper Rex and their individual players step up here because something is going to decide, okay, we're in a pretty bad spot now, <laughs> right? We're in a 4v5 now. So he's just going to take the initiative and just go, right? Again, at this point, we're just... Basically, if they come back to my freak, we're just saying like, fine, you go for it, right? We'll we'll just trust in my freak that he can hold that. So now these two have a decision to make, and something goes for it, right? And he goes crazy in this, and then Forsaken will also go crazy at the end. Maybe he felt he had that support from short, but didn't get what he wanted, and that puts a problem towards B. Yeah, Forsaken's that... gonna have his hands full here. He has been good for two. Something's I... got the cross. The cross. Don't, don't He's turn giving away. it up. Don't turn away. Go back to business, there it is, finds Tomasi, that's got to be so revealing. Oh my god. Oh, another one, something! Perfect, Old now triggered, and he actually fades Magnum. That's massive, Forsaken, Tino, and knocks him down. It's everything you would have wanted for them. And now Martin being hunted down, how much resilience can one man have? Not enough. Something reading it well, checking back on that cross and it all falling into place. Okay, then the very next round, round number 23, and in this one, Paper X try and get aggressive on A. They go for the Dizzy Flash just here, they're gonna send out a Raise Nade, we're gonna get a Fade Haunt up here, we get an Omen Smoke in here as well. So you see quite a bit of Util here if you are Kami Core, and when yet they don't see anyone, so he just picks up the Ult Orb to get his Raise Ult. So quite nice from them. Now Kami Core do decide eventually to come back in towards B. Now they haven't seen the Viper and the Omen, because the Omen could have smoked this from anywhere, and in some instances, 
Uh, so they're still a little wary. You can see they're still a little bit slow, and they don't have great guns this round uh, either necessarily. Uh, so that might, you know, add to their trepidation somewhat. But they do get in onto the site. They shut the door, uh, and in they come. But Paper X get ready uh, to kind of go for this kind of full retake here. But now we're going to get something really smart because we saw that Monyet got his Razor. He's going to pop his Razor, right? But then in response, Narrate's going to pop his KO ult. But Monyet, realizing that the KO ult is going to pop, he instantly sends out his Showstopper, which does actually kill the rate this space maybe having enough faith in this ult and these players oh it's so He's good the rate the time but of course he did find narrate who can now be rezzed and the problem for them here is monyet's just gonna end up slightly ahead of the rest of the team and comico will actually end up in a 5v4 obscene as soon as narrate popped the ult as well every time he pops his ult it's just oh, cursed yeah. but martin gonna get one back smokes off maybe give them a chance on the res here too this buys time and it's critical. But this is where maybe you can argue that Kamiko make a little mistake because after they've got this res and they've, you know, pushed them back with the fatal and whatnot, we've ended up in this spot, right? And the thing is, what we're going to end up with this post plan is everyone from Kamiko here is going to end up on the B site other than Martin, right? Martin's just going to end up on his own in logs and everyone else is just on the site. So Martin ends up isolated. Maybe Narrate could come back into B main here to just help him out, right? Maybe that's a choice that you could make potentially, but it is difficult and of course again they don't have great guns so i can understand the choice here of just sticking everyone on site but you'll see as we uh, play forward this retake this kind of gives paper x uh, a chance here really because it means they can just fully focus everything in on them right as we'll see here the prowler comes out no one's there to shoot it for martini who only has his knives right so he gets hit by that the dizzy flash uh, comes across here the wingman uh, also uh, goes in onto the site as well so this just allows paper x to kind of get out of course they have this viper wall coming across here as well so now what we'll see from paper x is a really nice bxx right where there's kind of so much going on uh, that it's a bit too much for calming core first thing is martin's going to die to forsaken after getting blinded by uh, by the prowler as we saw then this wall is going to go up and it just again separates these players these different players from kami core we get a fade haunt back here which reveals some of them uh we're gonna get a smoke back here the marsh bit back here as well we're gonna get an omen flash timed with the fade haunt as well so it's a really nice b retake and again i think you see the power of this wall potentially when you do get these retakes and just you know sectioning people up allowing paper x kind of you know an easier way in here as well uh down the down the stairs and and uh, yeah, it's just a really nice retake from Paper X. Good timing, good patience, and really good util. Here it comes, Martin, gonna be noted he is in danger. Can he somehow weather the storm? No, Forsaken puts him away. Now, four on the site, something on the clear. Mike Freak joins in, Paper X, starting to sweep the site. Down to Magnum, down to Shin. Mike Freak again, that's his side, but Shin can't do enough. Paper X. Gonna put themselves up to 12! And then came round number 24, where Paper X tried to end it in style, but it didn't go so well. This is not done yet, but that's big information! Martino! A lifeline given the Carmine Core off the back of his start! So they tried to go here for this fade haunt with the dizzy flash with the raise nade and an omen smoke right the, the the hope is these guys get blind right the nade comes in maybe deals some damage the fade haunt then reveals everyone you stand inside the smoke you spam them all the problem is that martin just sprints forward right and so he beats the dizzy flash he beats the nade he beats everything right and he's in the smoke and just starts spamming and gets two kills from doing so and really opens up the round for comic who will go on to win this round but have we ever seen Paper X go for this almost exact same play quite a while ago, round 24, on Ascent? Bankai for final round of half. Look, it's not ideal, but Jing's gone. He's sending it again. The reveal's huge. <laughs> Jing's got two. That play has been teased again and again. And finally, round number 26. And in this one, we're going to see Paper X again go for some A aggression. They're going to try and throw a seized nade in here this time. Uh, to try and catch some people out i do again have to question maybe my freak or device sorry here gets the call a little bit late because you know he's all the way back here and you might think you know could you be here to omen flash or could you be with your rays right just coming out and helping him swing because you'll see here that again martin just sprints forward and he beats all of the utility but then also magnum is able to get up on the ledge here and find pretty much a free kill on one yet that's it that does the combo catch no it doesn't. Actually, finally, Monier punished in this position. 
So Kami Core now in a 5v4, they just called for a big pause, right? And we can see here at this point that Mindfreak and something actually have pushed pretty far here and kind of, you know, they have good info on the rest of the map. So these two kind of know this is probably going to be an A hit at this point and they're going to get bombarded by utility as you'll see in just a second, right? Kami Core kind of wait for a smoke to fade in main and then away they go, right? KO nade, KO knife. We're going to get the breach done. You can see coming across here, we're going to get a breach flash. We're going to get a KO flash, right? And it's just these two on the site, but they put up a monstrous site hold because one, their utility is really good as well for just the delay and allowing them to kind of take fights, right? Because they're going to put this survival smoke here on the site, deep on the site, which is really important because it means that they just feel a bit more safe to, you know, take a swing, come back in and you're safe, right? And both of them do that. Both Divide, you know, comes this way and Forsaken comes this way and they both find kills from doing that, right? And then they're able to just come back in, tuck in safe and, you know, be safe again. What's also going to happen in this one though is they're going to throw a Fade Haunt up here and Divide is going to Paranoia back as well. And that that bit of utility I think is really crucial to how this round plays out because you'll see that Martin, he dashes, I, he slightly misses his smoke, it's a little low, I, he's trying to dash on top of Jen, I'm pretty sure, and he does actually land kind of on the, you know, just the tail end of Jen here, but then he gets revealed, so I think he drops back down, and then because of the smoke in here as well, he kind of has to take the time to then get his shorty out and jump into the smoke. And meanwhile, in that time that all that, all that is happening, Divine and Forsaken are both swinging out and they're finding kills down here. Right, so by the time that uh, Martin actually gets through this smoke, it's kind of already too late. Too many people have already died, you know, from Calming Core, and these two just put up a monster, monster effort. And although they didn't have a ton of utility themselves, the utility they did use was really good. There's no getting out for the retake. Uh, you've got to stand. You've got to try and hold that ground. Martin's in, but he didn't get what he wanted. Switching out to the shorty is Divine Forsaken. Racking up bodies. They've held them back. They're on the verge. I can't believe it. Paper X. Keeping hope alive for themselves. Take it to OT. Beating Carmine Core.